Hi everyone, I'm Erin from The Wine Sisters. Thank you for joining me today. I have got something a little bit rogue for what The Wine Sisters is. In fact, today what I'm showing you is zero proof or prohibition or temperance, pick your poison. We're showing you non-alcoholic cocktails. And actually, I have to tell you that I find it uncool when we have parties and for the people who are there who are not drinking for whatever reason, for lifestyle reasons, perhaps they're the designated driver, maybe they're even the underagers at a family gathering, just to throw them like some cranberry in a soda or toss them a can of pop, that's not cool. We don't wanna do that. It doesn't show any care or any interest in the people who are attending your soiree who happen to be on the wagon for whatever reason. So I'm gonna show you two of my favorite, very different, different non-alcoholic cocktails and let's not call them mocktails okay leave that term in the 90s that was like when I worked at like the major lobster hut and uh, we called them the mocktails of the Bahama Mamas that is not going to be happening okay so I'm gonna show you my first one and this is where we start to have a little bit of fun with simple syrup this is where you can really elevate your game don't be afraid of it a lot of people they can get intimidated I understand why but honestly you guys it's literally mixing equal portions of water and sugar letting that sugar dissolve over a simmered heat. And then if you want to up the ante, which I'm going to show you here, you can add in some flavoring. So for what I've done with this one, we've just ended up the holidays. I have a ton of spices lying around, including bay leaf, but I already actually always do have bay leaf, a lot of citrus. And so what I did is I made a bay leaf and lemon peel or a bay leaf and lemon infused simple syrup. So you can see it right here. Admittedly, it looks a bit like a urine sample, but trust me, it's not. It's actually very tasty. And it kind of smells like a lemon and cough drop. So you've got some sort of herbal element, you've got that citrusy note, it's really good. And I'm gonna show you how dead easy it is to make a non-alcoholic cocktail for the people who you love, who you're entertaining at any point in time of the year. You would take a, a tall glass or a highball glass is what they're called, you fill it with ice. And I'm going to add in an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And people will ask all the time, can I get the jarred stuff? And my answer is emphatically no. You can't. It takes one minute to squeeze a lemon. So do that, your drink is gonna be far superior. So I'm gonna use my trusty measuring. If you want to freestyle it, you can do a count of three Mississippis and that's about an ounce. So I'm gonna put in one ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. I'm also going to put in an equal portion of this lemon infused bay leaf simple syrup. This is gonna add a little bit of layering. I'm gonna show you a neat trick, chopsticks. This is brilliant. I'm gonna give it a nice little swirl so we're not even dirtying a second glass. So everything's nicely swirled in there. I'll put that there for now. And I'm going to top this up with a refreshing soda. If you wanted to, you could use tonic, but this is just gonna keep it almost like an elevated lemonade. And if you would like, you can put in, I have some mint here. So let's put in a little mint sprig. You can garnish it with a lemon wheel if you so choose. That one looks a bit chintzy, but go with it. That's what we do at home entertaining. And there you are. This is going to be your lemon bay citrus spritz, let's call it. If you do wanna make it alcoholic, can't blame me if you do. Uh, throw in an ounce of gin or even a vodka if people are not huge gin fans, or even mix up the soda with a little bit of Prosecco. The world's your oyster. All right, so super dead easy. Now, cocktail number two, not mocktail. I have a mixing glass here. This is called the Ruby Sunset, and it's uh, it's a recipe that I got from a Toronto bartender, I don't know, five or six years ago, and I've been using it ever since. Now, in the same way that that game Telephone can really uh, change things up, I feel like I may have uh, adjusted this recipe as the years have gone on, but the general sentiment is the same. It's called the Ruby Sunset. Uh, Mike Fortier, wherever he may be, is the one who introduced me to it. So I am going to take some beautiful mint, really aromatic, absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna take off some of these stems, put those casually off to the side, put those in the bottom of my clean and empty vessel. I'm going to add in, this is regular simple syrup. So once again, I didn't need a lot. This was a half cup of regular white sugar, half cup of, of water. I'm going to put in a half ounce of the simple syrup, pour it right on in there. And I'm going to do a half ounce of my lemon juice right here. In the of that, it goes. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna take our muddler. Looks like if you haven't used one of these before, it looks like you can really bash somebody with it. And you could if you wanted to. I'm going to muddle this to get some of those aromatics out, but what I'm not going to do is go to town and really get all my frustrations out on that because I don't want the mint to get too broken up. So while you're out there on your sexy date, you have little mint sprigs sticking in your teeth. 
not sexy. Okay, so I'm just gonna like give it a nice little swirl. I'm pressing down and I'm turning to bruise it a little bit, release those oils and those aromatics, but not get like tons of those little uh, bits and pieces all over the place. Put that off to the side. With my ice, use your hands. Stanley Tucci does it, I feel like we should do it. Gonna put some ice in there. If it's good enough for Stanley, it's good enough for me. My dream in life is to be Stanley Tucci. So now that we've got our ice, I'm now going to add in some cranberry juice. This is a really dramatic and fantastic way to just add a splash of like glamour and color. And really, who doesn't need a little glamour and color? So this is great to uh, serve during the winter holidays, but even when you're, you know, at poolside in the summertime, just that really bright blaze of red is, I think, just a really spectacular way to go. So I have an ounce of my cranberry juice in there. You can use your bar spoon because it's fun to go shopping at uh, cocktail stores. Uh, hopefully you're shopping local. You can use it. I actually do have a tendency to prefer to use my chopstick just because I find it a bit easier, but I'm gonna use my bar spoon for this because I've already started. I'm gonna be quiet for one second so you don't hear me over top of the ice. Hang on. And you know what? I'm gonna stick with what works. Look, so much easier for Aaron. See how you can't really hear it that much anymore? I'm gonna wait for that. Now I'm gonna do what I call a double strain. Let me get this out of the way so you can see it all. Double strain means I'm going to put the lid on my mixing glass, but I'm also going to use this little baby strainer into this very fancy champagne flute. No ice in it, straight champagne flute. I'm going to double strain. The reason why I'm double straining is again, I don't want, in case any of those mint sprigs sort of flecked off, flecked off, uh, <laughs> and you won't get that unsightly note in your teeth. So we've got this beautiful, now we're gonna do a little bit of tonic. Hopefully you're going to be able to find a really quality tonic where you are. I encourage you to get the best that you can or whatever is your favorite. I'm gonna do a one, two, three splash of that. I'm gonna do a one, two splash of soda. I'm going to garnish this with a bigger piece of mint. And you know what you could even do guys? You could train your kids to be like, and make these for people, get the kids involved at the party if you're having like a home soiree. And then that way you have your kids making these fun little drinks for everybody. And you have this beautiful little mint. You could also then consider piercing some cranberries or some raspberries or some, whatever's in season and float those in there too. So this is going to be your Ruby Sunset. And it's really terrific. You can even splash even more um, cranberry in there if you want to make it even more red. Oh, another hint. If you want to, this lends itself to a lot of swap out ingredients. Use pomegranate juice. Or if you want to, use champagne in place of the sodas. Or if you want to, throw in an ounce of gin. Lots and lots of flexibility here. So I hope that you enjoy it. I'm Erin from The Wine Sisters. If you really enjoyed this, I hope you stick around. Do make sure you hit subscribe right there. And we will see you next week with another titillating episode of the Wine Sisters. Cheers, guys.